Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Liberal Democrats fully support the £20 uplift to universal credit uh, and making it permanent, and we will vote later today in favour of the motion accordingly. It's the right thing to do to ensure that our most vulnerable have a safety net that works for them and their dependents. It's the right thing to do to invest in our social security system, the best way to help people escape from poverty and to help stimulate our recovery. And it's the right thing to do to act now to give families certainty rather than the approach favoured by the government, which is to leave families in the dark in the middle of the greatest economic crisis this country has ever seen. The coronavirus pandemic has transformed how so many people see our welfare system. People who never thought they would interact with the system are now doing so and need to continue doing so beyond April. So we should not be here debating about whether we should take away the vital £20. We should be debating about whether we can go further. Hundreds of thousands of people receive legacy benefits and many of them are unable to transfer to universal credit. They were excluded last year from the Chancellor's uplift on an entirely arbitrary basis. This group includes many disabled people and their carers. How can we leave those people out of the uplift at a time which is difficult for so many? What happened to no one left behind? What happened to whatever it takes? Government has failed to act on this issue and my North East Fife constituents who claim legacy benefits feel forgotten. And that's why we support uplifting legacy benefits and backdating that uplift to April 2020. It's the same story for carers. Unpaid carers are doing a remarkable and important job in very difficult circumstances. They deserve our support, but there is a historic deficit in the support available to unpaid carers. Carers Alliance is just £67.25 a week, the lowest benefit of its kind. And that's why it's vital that the government immediately uplift carers allowance too, in line with the uplift to universal credit. Too often carers have been an afterthought for many politicians and it's time to stand up for them. And as more and more people access universal credit, it's also high time that we look to the areas where it is failing to deliver. The Joseph Roundtree Foundation published a report last year looking at universal credit in Glasgow. It highlighted that many people who access universal credit do suffer from mental ill health. But even more damningly, the report makes clear that even for people who didn't have a mental health condition, many still suffered anxiety caused by their engagement with universal credit. The reasons include challenges for navigating the online system and a lack of face-to-face -face support with this, poverty and financial insecurity due to the waiting period for the first payment, the stress of managing budgets between payments and housing, and conditionality and the fear of sanctions. The whole point of conditionality is to get people back to work. Right now, there is simply little prospect of that. The government have failed to suspend conditionality during this current lockdown, even though they suspended it between March and July last year. But I also want to highlight the digital by default approach. The majority of claimants are accessing the system on mobile technology, and these are issues for my rural constituency. In short, there is much work to be done.